President Bola Chinubu addresses Nigerians on Democracy Day, says sacrifice of the people will not be in vain. Gunmen abduct Catholic priest in Kaduna. Federal government raises alarm over anthrax outbreak, warns Nigerians against pomo, smoked meat, and bushmeat. Now on the international scene, over 40 killed in militia attack on a camp for displaced people in Congo's Ituri region. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Abdullahi Ahmed. President Bola Tinubu has addressed Nigerians saying the removal of fuel subsidy will free up for collective use of the much needed resources which Hitato had been pocketed by a few rich. The president spoke on Monday on the public holiday which commemorates June 12, which was reason de designated a Democracy Day in 2018 by the administration of Muhammadu Buhari. He urged Nigerians to bear the burden in order to save the country from going under and take the country's resources away from the stranglehold of a few unpatriotic elements. Here's Keinde Amodu with the rest of the story. June 12 was designated a public holiday to remember the struggles to reclaim the mandate of Moshud Abiola, who has been acknowledged as winning the annulled 1993 elections. It took 25 years before a federal government in Nigeria could admit to the disservice done to the winner of the elections, which was annulled by the military junta of President Ibrahim Babangida. Abiola died in government custody, struggling to reclaim his mandate. And ironically, 30 years after the annulment, one of those in the vanguard of the struggle is the president of Nigeria. It is ironical because the legitimacy of President Tinubu is being challenged in court. However, the president believes this is a process that will strengthen democracy. It is only natural that even as those who won and experienced victory in various elections are elated and fulfilled, those who lost are disenchanted and disappointed. But the beauty of democracy is that those who win today can lose tomorrow. And those who lose today will have an opportunity to compete and win in the next rounds of election. Another thing that will strengthen democracy is a vibrant judiciary that can be trusted to deliver justice and strengthen institutions. This is why Tinumbu says the bill to harmonize retirement age for judicial officers was recently signed into law. For Chief M.K. Abiola, the symbol of this day, in whose memory June 12 became a national holiday. Democracy is eternal. It is about rule of law and vibrant judiciary that can be trusted to deliver justice and strengthen institutions. It has become imperative to state here that the unnecessary illegal orders issued to truncate or abridge democracy will no longer be tolerated. But the elephant in the room is the removal of fuel subsidy, which the president acknowledges has brought additional pain to the people. I admit the decision we impose extra body on the masses of our people. I feel your pain. This is one decision we must be able to save our country from going under. This year's cycle of elections were the seventh in what the president describes as a sacred ritual of democratic practice since 1999. From the federal capital, Kenya Modu, Trust TV News. In a related development, President Bola Tinubu, members of his government, state governors, heads of security agencies and service chiefs have marked the 30th anniversary of the annulment of the June 12, 1993 presidential election. The ceremony on Monday included a parade of guards mounted by detachments of the armed forces in their regimental colors at the forecourt of the presidential villa in Abuja. Once again, Kane De Amudu reports.
Thirty years ago, this man was one of those opposing government in a bid to restore the mandate of what was adjudged a free and fair election. It seems befitting that he is today at the head of government after a long-fought battle alongside other prominent Nigerians to restore democracy to the country. The significance is not lost on those present at this event, and many are urging that this hard-fought-for democracy should not be taken for granted. The struggle, right, that makes sure that we can have an enduring democracy. And we've had one now that's ongoing for like 24 years, and we're thankful that indeed there is no alternative to democracy and we just need to continue to nurture it, continue to continue to build on it, whatever our differences are, let's all clean it up. We are very excited and we know that there is hope for the future. We will cash in by ensuring peace and then ensuring that we work towards a secured nation where everybody can sleep with their eyes closed. And of course, we bring back prosperity. We produce what we consume and we consume what we produce and we are already starting. So democracy has come to stay, and political practitioners like us are excited that we are now also looking like part of other world, part of the world, where democracy, which is government of the people, for the people and by the people. So today we are celebrating our people, celebrating the opportunity given to us by God. But the question to ask is if this ceremony is enough to honor Moshud Abiola, who paid the ultimate sacrifice for refusing to let go of his mandate. Uh, the president, uh, Abiola, is no more. We can't bring him back. And uh, whatever we do, will never bring him back to life. But we should never forget. We should be inspired by his courage. We should be inspired by his steadfast commitment. And we should be inspired. When that announcement was made, that was long ago, but uh, we give glory to God uh, that today yeah, we are celebrating uh, uh, this very important landmark in the history of our country. Remember it was in 2019 that President Muhammad Buhari declared June 12 a work free day. Aside from President Pitinumbu inspecting the parade of guards, he and other dignitaries were thrilled to varieties of military displays and artistic drills. There was also a variety of dance drama and displays showcasing the cultural diversity of Nigeria. From State House Abuja, Kaindi Amudu, Trust TV News. Well, still staying with the commemorations of the Democracy Day, members of the Abiola family have appealed to President Bola Tinubu to immortalize the late MKO Abiola such that his legacies will not fade away. One of Abiola's sons, Hamin Abiola made the call on Monday at a prayer session held at the MKO Abiola family house, Bagura area of Abeokuta State in Abeokuta in Ogun State. He noted that his father remains someone to be emulated, saying his legacy must not be allowed to fade away. The state governor, Dapo Abiodun, says the late MKO Abiola, acclaimed winner of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, remains an icon of Nigeria's democracy and his legacies live on. The governor, represented by his deputy, Noemat Salako Oyedele, says Abiola remains an icon of democracy 30 years after the June 12 election. Democracy, Democracy Day, would always continue to be a day that will never be forgotten in the history of our country. Why? Because of the sacrifice of our father, late Chief M.K. Abiola, who made, you know, who laid down his life for us to be able to appreciate, you know, and to be able to have a day like this as, you know, a worthy celebration nationwide. And we hope that, you know, you know, subsequent, subsequently, the government would continue, you know, to, to ensure that, you know, this day, you know, stays in the lives and memories of every night. But what we'll continue to clamor for is that his sacrifice, his entitlement, everything that he has fought for, you know, over 30 years ago, would not be in vain. To extend my uh, condolences to the Abiola family, but to also let them know that we stand with them on this day, 30 days on from the day of the election, and uh, assure them that the government and people of Nigeria will always look back on that day and look back on Abiola 
as the person who has guided democracy to where we are today. And they should be proud to be the legacy of this uh, uh, symbol of hope and symbol of democracy. Elsewhere, June 12 of an omen by the military back in 93 has taken Nigeria back as the country marks the 2023 Democracy Day. Kano residents expressed this view in an interview with Trust TV News. Our correspondent, Idris Jibrin, reports that residents also are asking the federal government to strengthen the electoral process to further consolidate on democratic gains. His report. On June 12, 1993, Late Moshud Abiola was declared the winner of the Nigeria's presidential election, which was later annulled by the military administration of General Ibrahim Babangida. Former President Muhammadu Buhari declared June 12 as public holiday and as a democracy day in Nigeria. The important of June 12 is that for, for that side, Buhari do well to make the whole Nigeria know what has been happening before. You understand? Mm. No. This June 12th, the whole world knows about it. Say it's an unfair election. The best election ever we've had in this Nigeria up to date was stolen. Stolen mandate from Abiola. The only, the fairest and fairest election we had and was denied from him. But some residents in Kano say there is nothing to celebrate about June 12th or Democracy Day in Nigeria, given the controversy that surrounded the June 12th elections. Well, lie to lie, I don't know about today's a public holiday. I was in my, I don't leave my office when they say there is no work. So I never know because this is my first experience that today it's been uh, June 12th, two of us. Although public holiday is being observed in Kano as in many other parts of the country, but Nigerians believed that things could have been different if the mandate had been given to Abiola in 1993. We cannot entirely discard June 12. One, Abiola and Bashir Topa are no more. We supported uh, Bashir Topa. Nevertheless, we would have loved it if the election as it was free and fair and was given to the person who won the election. While Nigerians use this day to celebrate their democracy, experts argued that June 12 should be given much priority by the federal government so as to demonstrate clear concern over the annulment of the 1993 presidential elections. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. Now, away from the commemorations, the parish priest of Holy Trinity Catholic Church, Karku, in Kauru, local government area of Kaduna State, Reverend Father Jeremiah Yakubu, has been kidnapped by gunmen. Although the police authorities in Kaduna are yet to comment on the incident, the Chancellor of Catholic Diocese in Kafanchang, Reverend Father Emmanuel Okolo, said in a statement that Father Yakubu was kidnapped from the parish rectory in Kauru, local government area at about 11 p.m. local time on Sunday. While calling for an intense prayer for the quick and safe release of the victim from his abductors, the Chancellor also appeals to the par parishioners to refrain from taking laws into their hands. He assured parishioners that the church will use legitimate means to ensure the quick return of the kidnapped Reverend Father. Bandits on Monday killed a medical doctor and abducted 10 people, including members of the slain doctor's family, in an attack in Jengebe community of Talata Marafa local government area of Zamfara State. Residents say the armed men stormed the community on Monday morning and began firing shots from several angles. Jengebe community has suffered series of mass abductions. From January to date, there have been at least four cases of bandits' incursions into the community, according to the residents. During Monday's attack, the armed criminals broke the walls of the doctor's house to gain entrance. The doctor was shot dead immediately. The bandits forced themselves into the house and took away his family and some other residents in the neighborhood. They also burned a military vehicle near the victim's residence. The spokesperson of the state police command ASP Yazid Abubakar 
could not be reached for comment on the incident. In Plateau State, two herders were on Sunday evening killed by gunmen in Fast District, a Riyom local government area of the state. The chairman of Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, Magban, in Riyom, Bello Tafawa, says the herders were returning with their cattle when they were gone down. The Magban chairman gave the names of the victims as Adam Sani, 33, and Musa Ibrahim, who is 23 years of age. Bello says the attack on their members was an unprovoked attack, adding that they have already reported the case to the security agencies in the area, including Operation Safe Haven, which is a multi-security task force maintaining peace in Plateau State. The spokesperson of the State Police Command, DSP Alabo Alfred, did not respond to inquiries on the incident. Plateau had in recent times witnessed a series of attacks and killings mostly between farmers and herders. It's a re regular occurrence with the police often saying they are doing their best to tackle the menace. You're watching the news update on Trust TV coming up after the break. Should marriage expenditure be regulated? More details after the break. Welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. First, a look at the stories making the headlines at this hour. <music> President Tinubu addresses Nigerians on Democracy Day, says sacrifice of the people will not be in vain. Gunmen abduct Catholic priest in Kaduna. Now to other news, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development on Monday alerted the general public on the outbreak of anthrax in some neighboring countries within the West African sub-region. Following the development, the ministry strongly advises Nigerians to desist from consuming heights, popularly known as pomo, smoked meat and bush meat as they pose serious risks until the situation is brought under control. A statement signed by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Dr. Ernest Afolabi, says the outbreak was first recorded in northern Ghana, bordering Burkina Faso and Togo, putting the whole sub-region at risk. The statement further warned the general public against closeness to unvaccinated animals with anthrax as it can easily be transmitted to man through the inhalation of anthrax spurs including consumption of contaminated or infected animal products such as hides and skin, meat or milk. The bill passed by the 9th Sokoto State House of Assembly regulating marital expenses has been generating mixed reactions in the state with some residents expressing fear that it is only targeting the poor. Abu Bakr Awal Imam reports that the law has been receiving praises and knocks since its passage in May of this year. Take a look. On May 9, 2023, Sokoto State House of Assembly passed into law the amended Sokoto Marital Expenses Law. The law named Regulation and Control of Expenses of Marriages, naming as circumcision ceremonies and for purposes connected therewith 2022, was aimed at checkmating extravagances associated with marriage, among other things. 
Our findings reveal that the least one can spend on his wedding is about one million naira, regardless of his financial status. This involves purchasing cartons of exotic drinks, sweets, and some talking cash gifts to the bride in the name of I see I love, the payment of dowry, and at least a set of bags containing tens of different clothing materials, jewelry, shoes, and cosmetics, among others. The kind of uh, provisions, the timing for the marriage is also being controlled the sizable number and I believe that is also a very good one. We go a long way in creating, uh, in reducing competition between the fair groups. Somebody will do more than 100 or 30, 20 bags, um, boxes of uh, provisions for the marriage. But I believe now one that's uniform rate, that's going to be a, a reduction of, a drastic reduction of competition among the fair groups. The new law However, limit ICI law expenses to only two cartons of sweet with 20,000 cash gift to the bride, but there was no limitation to dowry. The law, which is targeting only Muslims, also pegged bridal clothes locally known as Kailepi to only 10 rappers, just as it stipulates one month imprisonment with an option of 50,000 naira for any person who violates the law. Also calling more importantly to the state government to ensure implementation of this law because when you don't spend above your means, you are not likely going to be looking for loans and you are not even going to likely to engage in stealing or banditry because when you spend the money that you don't have and you want to pay, you will go into anything in order to get that money and pay back that loan. While some residents of the state see it as a welcoming development, other fears that it will only act on the poor. It's when you have that you spend and uh, it's not mandatory for you when you are getting married or on naming ceremony for you to do some certain outrageous expenses. It depends on the family, it depends on the background, it depends also on the orientation and also the belief. It depends on the self-esteem of both parties, either that of the wife or the husband uh, that are into that celebration. And uh, I want to believe that those that are going to make those laws are mostly also at the top and they are the ones that will break that law. Believe you me, they are the only ones that can spend that kind of outrageous figure that we are talking about. A renowned Islamic scholar in the state, Sheikh Issa Telatamapra, who spoke with our reporter on phone, said the law contravenes Sharia law. Abu Bakr Awal Imam reporting for Trust TV. Now let's take a look at developments on the international scene. More than 40 civilians were killed in a militia attack on a camp for displaced people in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo's Ituri province early on Monday. A local official and the head of a civil society group said in a statement, they say the cooperative for the development of the Congo group, Kodeko, one of many militant or militia groups operating in Congo's conflict-ridden east was responsible for the killings at the Lala camp. Kodeko claims to defend the interests of Lendu farmers who have long been in conflict with Hema herders. His fighters have killed hundreds of civilians in Ituri and forced thousands to flee their homes, according to the United Nations. Jean-Richard Lenga, chief of Bahema Bajere district, says the militiamen massacred 46 people with knives and firearms and burnt others in their homes in the middle of the camp. Lenga says that the local population was dispersed as many people have fled to nearby town of Bule seeking safety. Now to sports development here in Trust TV. The maiden edition of Media Trust Chairman's Cup football competition has ended in Abuja with Team Trust TV emerging as champions. Here's Trust TV's Adeni with more on the story. A one-day Chairman's football competition involving Team Daily Trust, Aminia, Team Trust TV and Team Trust Radio head in Abuja with Trust TV lifting the trophy in the first edition. Each team played three matches before a winner emerged in the round robin tournament with so much talent to display. Group General Manager, Human Resources and Management Services, Adisa Bala, was on hand to declare open the tournament with a kickoff. Okay, <laughs>
Coordinator of the event, Olawale Peters, rolls out the rules of the game and encourages teams to play with unity as the teams had light warm-up to get the players in the mode of play. Trust TV dominated the first match to open the tournament with floodgate of goals, scoring five to win their first match against Trust Radio. In the second game, Daily Trust took on Aminia in a tough duel that saw team Daily Trust scoring first. Aminia pulled one back to erase the lead before the end of the second half. Trust TV won three matches with nine points and 12 goals to leave the trophy, while Team Aminia came second. 20 goals were scored in the first edition of Media Trust Chairman's Football Competition as Team Trust TV Ayuba Kefas won the higher goal scorer with five goals. The most valuable player of the tournament was awarded to Mujahid Shitu of Team Trust TV. The winning team captain expressed so much happiness after his Team Trust TV lived the maiden edition. Said, I'm glad Media Trust could organize something like this for people like us so that we could showcase our talent and it's a privilege playing among the Trust TV team and being the captain also because I'm happy that we play as a team and we achieve what we play. Well, no secrets, honestly, the truth is we play as a team and when you play as a team you achieve a result. So that's what we just did. Group Executive Director of Finance and Corporate Services, Nura Dara, expressed joy for the success of the event that brought four teams together in media trust. I'm really happy and elated to be here, to see everyone around, to participate in this very first edition of this. And uh, we are highly encouraged as management and will continue to promote this kind of event so that uh, it will bring our uh, uh, togetherness among all our staff. Group General Manager, Human Resources and Management Services at Dizabala said the competition has come to stay with the aim of building one big family. What I saw today has actually gingered me more than ever before um, to continue to bring about this kind of thing within the organization. Um, what we tried to do was to say people should come, select the team. It doesn't matter whether you are on trust TV or Trust Radio or Daily Trust. It's all about togetherness and that's what I saw today. So in terms of sustainability and continuing with this, I'm sure it has come to stay in the company. Teams will be looking forward to next season with better planning ahead of the tournament to have a shot at lifting the chairman's cup. That's Sport News. I'm Adini Aji Shafe. At the end of the day, there was no victor, no vanquished. Well, that's our package on Trust TV News Update at this hour. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. Of course, you can stay up to date with the latest on our YouTube live stream. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Thank you for your time.